In today's video, we're going to be breaking down the current conditions. We're going to be going into the upcoming severe weather. We're going to be also talking about that potential tropical cyclone that now odds are kind of increasing in as well. Let's get straight into things. And first things first, we're taking a look here at our current radar imagery. We can see some storminess heading into the northwest. We'll talk about that. But the biggest thing here is definitely this storminess that is all over the place here for the central and eastern United States. Obviously, multiple states involved here with these thunderstorms and showery uh, storms in general. So we're going to be talking about those again in just a little while. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and zoom in here to the northwestern United States. And as we can see, it's probably going to be a rainy day a little bit later today. And it's already starting out here for Oregon. But these storms are just moving on toward just like this. Uh, and this is going to really just impact the region throughout the day today. Uh, overnight and probably later yesterday, it wasn't too too stormy at all but this is going to start to uh, really move into the region and impact you guys. Um, we do have some interesting rotation going on here. Obviously we have a bit of a low in this region where we can see that the spin is about like this. So there's a low somewhere in here. Um, this also includes a cold front here and then a warm front way up above. You can hardly see that. Let me zoom out so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So there is a warm front up here like this, and then we see a cold front down like this coming from this low. Um, and this is going to really spread its way eastward. We're going to see this cold front really move in, and this is going to move all the way. Basically, the low is going to move up like this. It's going to move out of the region. So that's going to allow for that cold front uh, to impact these regions and start heading further and further northward until really we see a cool down for the entire uh, United States. So that is going to be the look. Uh, for the Regardless of that, we, we are going to see this warm front really uh, bring showery and thunderstorm activity from the south, very tropical activity in there. As we take a look at the Gulf of Mexico, we can see very strong areas of thunderstorms and heavy, heavy rainfall here for a lot of these areas. Flooding is a big concern with these larger pockets of heavy rainfall. Obviously, when you see persistent rainfall at this rate, uh, it is a bit concerning, so that is the look here. Um, and in general, we're just going to be watching this and tracking this um, this situation because obviously, again, like I mentioned, we're going to see inches and inches of rainfall from this, and this is something we need to really watch. As we head further northward, it's a little bit more showery, less persistent with that rainfall. We do see some of those more moderate to heavy showers, probably some thunderstorms in there as well. It's just not quite as bad as those areas right on the Gulf Coast as of now. Uh, but still, flooding is a concern here for sure, so we're going to be watching for that possibly later on. We have some general showers up here for the Great Lakes and Ohio Valley. Uh, these are lighter in nature. We do have some more moderate pockets, but this is just lighter than the areas to the south. And then we have very light showers heading into New England at this point. So for areas like New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, we're seeing quite a bit of that light to moderate rainfall there. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to move on and we're going to start talking about the upcoming weather. We're going to talk about the upcoming pattern. Again, that tropical activity and also some severe weather. Now here we are taking a look at the upcoming stormy pattern. We can see this storm really move through. Again, it was kind of in this region and it moves up to here. So that's what it's going to be at by about 5 a.m. tonight. We can see that cold front down there, like I was mentioning, the warm front extending up above. This is what is allowing for the warmer air to really make its way in. That cold front is going to hit the coast by tomorrow night, I would say. Low is about right here. Cold front is still around here. Warm front's up here. Uh, so that's going to be by about 8 p.m. on Friday. By the time we're reaching Saturday afternoon, there will still be some lingering showers behind, but the cold front should have passed. Uh, it's going to be quite a minor cold front as far as the actual impact on temperatures. Things have already been kind of cold. Um, we are going to see storminess really begin up here for the northwest, though, after this point. So for Saturday, May 28th, we're going to start to see storminess mostly up there in the northwest and north central United States. And look at that. By Sunday afternoon, that really continues Jet stream's doing about like this, so that cold front is really not very long-lived at all. We're seeing warmer temperatures really move into the east. Colder temperatures here into the west. That's why we're seeing some snowfall there for the Rockies, some very late-season snowfall, actually. Monday afternoon, this is the look, again, still kind of like this. Big old ridge in the east. Things are going to be warming up for sure. And then a big trough here in the west. That, this is generally the look that we're taking a look at here. 
And by the time we reach about, let's see, this is about 2 a.m. on Wednesday, June 1st, we're going to see a low way up in Canada, maybe a cold front trying to extend down in here. Potential severe weather that we need to watch for in these regions here as these two air masses mix very warm air here in the east and very chilly air compar comparatively there to the northwest. Um, as we take a look at Thursday, June 2nd, we can see some thunderstorms surge up here for the central United States, even maybe the northeastern United States. But there is no really big storms in the United States by this point. We talked about how ending the month of May and starting the month of June, things are really going to quiet down in general. But that doesn't mean that we have nothing to talk about because if you look, we've been looking here in the United States, if you just draw your attention down here to where I'm drawing this arrow, that is our potential tropical cyclone that has silently moved in. And we're going to watch where it tracks, but it does about like this, and it just moves up like this. And every single day we're getting more information on this from the European model, but just watch it. Moves over the Yucatan Peninsula, 995 millibar low pressure center. And it's heading towards maybe southern Florida. We'll have to watch that. That would be kind of the trajectory that it's taken to that point. We do see, regardless of that, storminess here in the deep south and the southeast. Also up here for the north central and northwestern United States. And maybe some showery or thunderstorm activity up there in the northeast. And that's by about June 5th. So we're seeing these interesting weather patterns set up. Um, obviously no snow by this point. Things are getting more and more summer-like by this point. And it really, really is worth tracking, and we do need to pay attention to this, very, very close attention, actually. Now, what we're going to do here is take a look at the total precipitation through the next 10 days, so through June 5th, basically. And if you're anywhere in the whites, you're expecting no precipitation. Grays will be 0.1 inches or less of precipita precipitation. Greens will be 0.1 to 0.5 inches of precipitation. Blues will be 0.5 to an inch of precipitation. Your yellows are going to be an inch to two inches. Reds will be two to five inches. And then your browns will be five to ten inches plus. Very, very intense uh, there if you're in the reds or the browns. That's where we're expecting a lot of precipitation over the next ten days. For total snowfall, obviously this is pretty exclusive for the northwestern United States there. If you're anywhere in the grays, we're expecting a dusting if anything. Blues will be two to six inches of snowfall. Purples will be 6 to 10, and then your pinks will be 10 to 20 inches of snowfall. And then your pastels are going to be your 20 inches plus. Quite a bit expected in those regions. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the upcoming temperature pattern. All right, now let's just move this towards this afternoon. And this is going to be the look. We do have some colder air here in the central United States and some neutral temperatures along the coast. Not going to be a super hot day. But we do have a lot of warm air just up there in the north or kind of the western United States as a whole, we start to see some colder air work its way into the northwest and for the west coast in general. This is really going to force this warm air to head eastward. We've been talking about this for a while, but really it's like oil and water where this is the oil, and that's forcing the water here, or in this case warm air, to head this way, which is, head, which is causing this oil to move this way. You know, you get the point. Um, it's pushing each other around. Um, they're not going to mix or, or interact. It's going gonna, it's gonna to push one another away. And we see that the cold air really establishes itself. This is going to be by about uh, this is going to be by about 8 p.m. on Sunday, May 29th. A very cold air up here for the West. Very, very cold air, but very warm air here for the central United States and heading into the eastern United States. And by the time we, hit, we head towards Tuesday, May 31st, this is the look. Very, very warm air here for the eastern United States. Cold air here for the west, but there is some warm air working its way into the, into the west coast. So that means that probably that cold air is going to head further eastward over time. Thursday, we see this look. We see warm air for the southeast all the way up through, up into the northwest, the entire west coast there, uh, with cold air in between here. So for these regions, we see, we see really cold air. Um... As we approach Friday, it's going to be June 3rd. Still kind of a similar look here. We have, in general, the southern United States is seeing most of the warmer air compared to normal. We are seeing some cold for the northwest here, but especially here for the central up into the northeastern United States by June 3rd. And by June 5th, things are looking chillier here in the east in general and warmer out west in general. So that will be the look by that point. Now let's go ahead and deep dive into this, this potential tropical cyclone real quickly. So for the European model, here is our cyclonic relative vorticity. And this is just showing very large areas of rotation 
like cyclones or low pressure systems. The reds, the pinks are going to be your more intense areas of rotation like you would see in a, tro a stronger tropical system. Your greens and your blues could just be uh, coincidental, if you will. Um, let's just go ahead and keep going with this. And we can see by Tuesday, May 31st, we see this crossing over Mexico there because this does start in the eastern Pacific there. And it crosses over Mexico, which is a pretty hard task for tropical cyclones to do. Okay, this is not easy by any means. This is not um, encouraged development. But once it makes its way into the Gulf, it would have an easier time developing. This is by Tuesday afternoon, May 31st. Wednesday afternoon, June, June 1st, we see most of this activity is over water by this point, so we could see some rapid development. And again, this activity is kind of going to head in this direction there. Let's keep watching. Tuesday, June 2nd, look at how it's getting its act together. It's getting tighter with that rotation and more intense with it. June 3rd here, which is going to be uh, Friday. The thing is, is it does interact here with the Yucatan Peninsula quite a bit. So this is going to kind of hinder the development a bit. So we'll see what happens with that. Saturday, June 4th, though, it's over open water again and looking quite intense for this area. Just north of the Yucatan Peninsula by that point on, on June 4th. And we can't really see any further than that. So we see that it moves about like this and moves up to here. So what will it do by this point? Again, it's right about here. It could head towards Florida. It could head towards Cuba. It could kind of turn and head back towards Mexico. It could turn completely around. This time of year, it's a big question mark. It can head in any direction from this point. And that's why it's important that you subscribe and tune in daily because we're going to be tracking this thing every single day. The GFS does have a different opinion. Let's watch this one play out. Uh, usually the GFS model is the one that would show something more like what we just saw. Uh, I will say the GFS model does have a tropical system hitting directly into Georgia on June 1st. A homegrown system, which is a little bit more common this time of year than one straight from the Gulf of Mexico, I would say. That hits Georgia as kind of a tropical depression, maybe a tropical storm level storm. Uh, coast of Georgia, and then it heads right up the coast. So it, it kind of does this like turn and then heads up here, which is pretty much worst case scenario as far as impacts and keeping its intensity. Not too far-fetched, but I mean, a little unusual. So we will see if that ends up taking place. But we do see that this activity that tries to come up into here mostly turns and heads this way. So we'll watch that play out real quickly. So the activity comes up from Mexico and then it heads in that direction. Um, we can tell that there's probably a jet stream here. A lot of this activity in here is indicating stronger winds heading like this. So this is probably what's causing, it's shielding the storm from heading north of there. Uh, it would really eat up the storm. But this storm that is obviously already north of there has an easy time just kind of hanging out over here. So both major models have a tropical cyclone. They're just different tropical cyclones. And they're very close to being the same time frame. So there is a lot to track here in the Atlantic, actually. Now, taking a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here from the National Hurricane Center, we can see that this is our area that we're watching. This is the cyclone that would potentially cross over Mexico and head into the Gulf of Mexico, like our European model showed. There is now a 90% chance of development over the next five days. So we're going to be able to watch this very, very shortly within the next five days develop. And we'll have a much better idea of what to expect. Over the next 48 hours, though, it only has a 60% chance of development. So about uh, the flip of a coin on if this one will develop over the next two days. But the three days following that two-day period, there's a 90% chance that it will have developed. Keep that in mind. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the storm prediction setup. All right, now here's the day one categorical outlook for severe weather. And we have two areas of general thunderstorm risk. One up there for the northwest and then one here in the eastern United States indicated by the lighter green regions. This is where we expect general thunderstorms, but anything is possible. So you're still going to want to heed every watch, warning, and advisory. The two darker green regions is going to be our two marginal risk areas, and that's where we expect isolated severe weather to potentially take place. The three yellow regions there that we see are our slight risk areas, and that's where we expect scattered severe weather to potentially take place today on Thursday, May 26th. For day two, we see that that cold front reaches the east coast. We see a marginal risk and a slight risk there. We have two general thunderstorm risks, actually one for the west and central United States, and then one here for the eastern seaboard and surrounding regions. 
Again, this is where general thunderstorms are expected, but anything is possible. Keep that in mind. We have two darker green regions as well, which is again our marginal risk areas where we expect isolated severe weather to take place. And then we have our yellow area there for Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and you take it all the way down through Virginia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and everywhere in between. And that is our slight risk area where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible. For the individual outlooks on this day, because this is especially interesting to me, uh, we see that for the damaging wind outlook, this is all based on 25 miles of a given location, by the way, but we have two areas of 5% chance of damaging wind. Uh, we have an area there of 15% chance of damaging wind taking place there for our slight risk area there in the yellow. Keep that in mind as well. For hail, we only have a 5% chance in the two different areas. Again, it's all based on 25 miles of a given location. So in this example, we have a 5% chance of hail taking place within 25 miles of a given location there within the two green areas. So that is how it works. And then for tornadoes, we have a 2% chance there in the green and then a 5% chance there within the brown, which is a little bit elevated for the East Coast. So we're going to want to watch that one closely. A little bit concerning there. Usually 5 to 10% is the most you'll ever get there along the eastern seaboard. So uh, that is a little bit on the higher side here for this region. For day three here, we have three general thunderstorm risk areas where we expect general thunderstorms. We have two marginal risk areas, one there for New England and then one there for the north central United States. And this is again where we expect isolated severe weather to be possible. Then the yellow area there is where we expect scattered severe weather to be possible. Now, we do have two extended day outlooks, one of which looks really bad. This one in particular on Sunday, May 29th, uh, we have a 15% chance of severe weather there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance of severe weather there within the orange area. The yellow area it, it does translate to a slight risk once it's in the category, or once it's in the um, yeah, categorical outlook, which will be once it's in day three, so we'll have to wait till tomorrow. That yellow area will be a slight risk. That's at least what's expected. And then the orange area will at least be an enhanced risk there. So we're expecting a pretty elevated day on Sunday, May 29th. We also have a day five outlook here where we have this whole yellow area from, from Kansas and Nebraska all the way up through Minnesota and Wisconsin. And that is where, again, we expect a slight risk of severe weather there on Monday, May 30th. Anyway. For today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. Basically, until we're close to this tropical system, I'm going to feel pretty uh, moderate at best with the confidence. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Larry LePan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Hartman, Kudalasa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Khaleesi also. I'd also thank our channel members, Catbite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.